Hey guys, welcome back to the Cool Day Podcast. Welcome back to another video. On today's video, we're going to be talking in a little bit more detail about Barcelona's historic win against PSG in the Parc de Prince. Barcelona, they managed to beat PSG 3-2 to in, uh, in what is a historic uh, night for the club. Uh, but guys, before I get started on the video, make sure to follow me on all my social media platforms. Go over there and check me out. That way you guys can stay up to date with everything that I do on the channel. But guys, uh, let's get straight into video into the video and let's talk about Xavi's uh, post match uh, his post match press conference in which you know he talks a little bit more about that match against PSG. Now, um, obviously, that match against PSG we did win, but it was a very difficult and complicated uh, and intense uh, match for Barcelona. Uh, we all know that in recent years, Barcelona, you know, they just haven't been up to standard in Europe, and we've basically had a couple a couple of tough years in the Champions League. And, um, you know, that performance, uh, I have nothing to say, but it made me proud to be a Barcelona fan. And, uh, you know, that sentiment is shared in Xavi's, um, you know, uh, post-match press conference. But let's look at, some, at the words from Xavi and let's see what he is thinking uh, ahead um, of them, uh, like after the match. Uh, PSG is still the favorite. They played a great game, but we held them back. It is a great victory against one of the best teams in the world. They press, and it is very difficult to defend this team. We have done well, but it will be very difficult in Barcelona. Right there, Xavi, he, you know, he's saying, hey, you know, we've beaten PSG. This is a fantastic victory, but let's keep our heads you know, settled. Uh, let's get it. Let's uh the job isn't done you know there's still a lot of work to be done and so you know i like that xavi has that mindset because uh i i believe like a 3-2 victory is a perfect result because if barcelona you know they were to have like a two goal advantage then that becomes you know a little bit tricky because then you know some sense of like um of ease barcelona might get comfortable into the match and that might, might make things difficult for us um Xavi on coming back from 2-1 down. Uh, the players believe it. We have this opportunity, and by playing like this, we will have our chances. Nothing is done, but it is time to feel proud. It will be very difficult in Barcelona, but it is a great game for the team and a day to say that Barcelona is alive. A lot of a lot of haters were saying, hey, you know, Mbappe, uh, Dembele, PSG, these guys are going to destroy you guys. These guys are, you know, Barcelona, they're nothing in Europe. And, um, you know, Barcelona, they show up in the Parc de France and, and, you know, in Mbappe's home stadium and, uh, and a team who's been unbeaten for, what, 27 matches? And they come there and they just get the win. Absolutely huge performance from Barcelona. Uh, uh, what, what Xavi said as like what he was feeling uh, throughout the, the, the night. I am just another Barcelona fan, happy and proud, but this is not over. We are halfway through the movie. It is a great victory away from home after many years, but this is not over. We have a very difficult game in Barcelona. Uh, behind the defensive line, we found space. We matured the game. We had time to prepare for the game. Um, and now Xavi answers the big question. Is it, you know, like, are you going to continue with Barcelona? And uh, and this is what he says in regards to that. Uh, it's time to enjoy, to finish the job. We have a crucial game next week, but it doesn't change at all. And so right there, you know, he he, he says that, you know, the job uh, against PSG isn't done, but he doesn't answer the question about his continuity with the club. And, you know, right there, because he hasn't answered that, could that, you know, that answer somehow uh, show an inclination uh, towards Xavi staying at the club because we know in the past Xavi has been so adamant in his decision to basically leave at the end of the season. Uh, and lastly, guys, I'm going to be talking about Xavi's quotes in regards to the European upsets uh, that we had in the past. Uh, hopefully, we come um, we come from tough years, but this victory shows that we are alive. A great victory against a team prepared to win the Champions League. One of the things that makes me most happy is the personality in the face of difficulty, which was something we were missing this year. It is very difficult to dominate a team for as many times as we have done. All the footballers have done an extraordinary job, and it's what I'm most proud of. And guys, I you know I, I have no words to say about this Barcelona performance because this this Barcelona performance is a uh, one for the ages because uh, this has been you know one of Barcelona's best performances in Europe in so so many years. When was the last time Barcelona played in this type of performance away from home against this quality of opponent? You know, and and especially in the circumstances that, that we did, Barcelona they were winning the match. PSG they came back, they were leading two one. 
and then Barcelona manage to to overcome those circumstances and then get a 3-2 victory. And uh, that takes an extraordinary amount of mental strength and I applaud every single uh, Barcelona player who was out there on the pitch. Uh, but now, guys, we told, we looked at uh, Xavi's quotes, but let's look at an interesting quote from Luis Enrique. And he said, the second leg will be a final. We will go to Barcelona and fight. Be confident in my team. And obviously, Luis Enrique, he's not going to say, you know, uh, of, of course, Barcelona get a win. Uh, it's, um, especially we're going away from home. Uh, it's, it's over. Absolutely not. Uh, we do know that PSG, when they do lose their first leg in the knockouts, they do not manage to advance. And so hopefully we can see a repeat of that situation. But now, and, you know, since PSG, they're not going to be playing uh, in the weekend. PSG, they're, they're going to be basically rested and having all their focus uh, towards that match on Tuesday. On Tuesday night, where they're gonna, you know, treat it as a final, they're gonna be going to war against Barcelona, and they're gonna try to mount a comeback. But um, now, guys, you know, try diving into a little bit more detail, I want to be talking about Ilkay Gundogan because Ilkay Gundogan in yesterday's match was just so so vital. His experience, his distribution of the ball, uh, he was magnificent on the night, uh, absolutely. Um, and um, Ilkay Gundogan has now registered his fourth assist in the Champions League this season. Uh, the record for a Barcelona player in the, in the season is five, which I was surprising. I, I was surprised that the you know, the record of assists was only five. I thought Messi would have more. Um, but Gundogan uh, now also has the most assists in the UCL this season and has created the most number of chances. And guys, this is all like, like keep in mind that Gundogan has been playing, you know, sort of like a deep line playmaker he, in, in most of the games because, you know, at the start we weren't playing with a DM. Gundogan, he was at that base of the midfield and still he's up there. His numbers are fantastic. And, you know, if we had a CDM, a proper CDM, imagine the freedom that Gundogan would have to basically explode and uh, be the, the difference maker for this team. And, you know, we were talking about Gundogan. He's saying, hey, he's, he's been arguably Barcelona's best player uh, throughout this season. And, you know, hopefully we can see a repeat of that performance on Tuesday night uh, in order to finish the job. But now talking about Pedri in his match reaction, what he said after the match. And this is what he said in regards to that. Uh, this is what I wanted when I came off the bench. Rafinha is a player who never stops running deep. And luckily, we connected with a pass. We took a step forward, but there is still a second leg ahead of us. And you guys, you guys are noticing a theme right here. Every, you know, Xavi, um, Pedri, the squad in general do not see the job as finished. And, you know, it's 100% is it. You know, Barcelona, they're not through. If PSG win on, on, on Tuesday, my two will lead, then Barcelona are out, or, or if they take it to extra time and they win on penalties. Barcelona, they still have to win. They still have, uh, you know, a big job to do. The job isn't done. Uh, but continuing on, uh, he says this in regards uh, to, you know, to his performance. Uh, wait, my bad. Uh, this is one of the things we have improved. Uh, before we conceded a goal or two, we would collapse. Uh, I am happy. It's great to come back from injury and with such a win. And he's absolutely right with that quote right there. Uh, in the past years, Barcelona, you know, and the way that we conceded, conceding two goals in a matter of like three minutes, Barcelona would have capitulated. Barcelona would have capitulated, and then it would have been, you know, another humiliation in Europe. We would have been, we would have seen like a four-one. Uh, a 5-1, something like that, a 5-2. It would have been an embarrassing night uh, for us. And, you know, that mental strength that all these players showed uh, stopped that from happening and gave us the win. Uh, but now, you know, shifting the conversation uh, to the defenders, guys, we have to talk about Ronald Araujo because Ronald Araujo was an absolute monster in transition. The guy was abs him. I would say you know, not only Araujo, but the entire defense was absolutely magnificent on the night. Uh, other than that, like five minutes or, or, or like 10 minute period uh, of lapse of concentration, you know, in the start of the second half where PSG, they get the two goals. You know, Barcelona, they were imperious. The, the defense um, was magnificent. Uh, they, they were able to to keep Kylian and Mbappe basically anonymous, uh, which we are going to talk about. Um, they managed to stop so many transitions, so many dangerous counters. And, uh, you know, look at this tackle uh, from Araujo on Barcola. 
Now, Barcola was on 1v1 against Ter Stegen, and, you know, Araujo, he makes up the ground, and, you know, Araujo is a beast in transitions. In transitions, you know, he's the one defender in the world who would say, hey, I want that to be my, my defender, uh, you know, tracking back and making and, you know, stopping the counterattack. And he managed to get a last ditch, uh, ditch tackle on Barcola uh, to make sure that PSG don't take the lead. Uh, because, I'm guys, I 100% guarantee this, if Barcola shoots right there, it's a goal, and PSG take the lead. I have zero faith in Ter Stegen because, you know, I, as much as we say, you know, Ter Stegen, fan, fantastic in La Liga, in Europe, this guy's a fraud. And, you know, I, I don't want to say this because it's, it's a moment of celebration, but let's not keep in mind that, Two, like both of the goals that PSG scored, Ter Stegen had a massive uh, influence, and you know he he massively affected both goals. I don't think you know a top goalkeeper saves both of those goals. Now I'm not saying it's an easy save, but a top level goalkeeper, a Courtois and Allison, they save that and they keep you in, into the game. Both of the saves were just it was just so poor from Ter Stegen, and that's the one worry I have from this team. In the biggest of in the biggest of occasions, I don't know if Ter Stegen is going to be able to make a save to keep Barcelona in the game. And you know, but you know, diving on and moving on to more positive notes, uh, we talked about Rajo, but now I'll be talking about Paul Kovarsi because Paul Kovarsi he made this line breaking pass towards Lewandowski, and you know, in like when I was watching the watch long and I saw this pass, I was thinking like, oh my gosh. I didn't even see that pass. Pau Kowarsi, as you guys can see right here, being marked by Dembele, and I believe like Kang In Lee, uh, he, made, he he puts a bullet of the pass and passes it all the way to Lewandowski right here. And, th and this is where Lewandowski, his distribution, his, his link on play comes into fact in, uh, in, into factor. And then he uh, lays it off to Laminia Mao out wide. And just it was an absolutely brilliant pass from Pau Kowarsi. And Pau Kowarsi on the night, he absolutely pocketed um, you know, um, Kylian Mbappe, uh, with this, and look at this iconic picture right here. Pau Kowarsi, a 17 year old who, who's only had two matches in the Champions League and what, like 15 starts in his career so far. Um, absolutely put in an imperious performance against Kylian Mbappe and, you know, a team effort. Um, but him specifically absolutely did a fantastic job on locking down Kylian Mbappe. And guys, looking at the stats from the team. Uh, these are Kylian Mbappe's stats uh, right here. Um, zero shots on target, zero assists, 25% of the duels won, lost possession 14 times, nine touches in the op in the opponent's box, had his seven-game streak of scoring against Spanish teams uh, snapped. And that's all thanks to the defensive work of Arajo, of Kunde, of Kubarsi, of the entire team. Um, but Guys, that defense, Kowarsi, Kunde, they, they were absolutely monsters on the night. And uh, I, I'm so, so proud of them. Um, but lastly, guys, we have to talk of the man of the match. We have to talk about Rafinha because he was absolutely vital in Barcelona's comeback and Barcelona's win against PSG. He got, you know, the first goal uh, to give us the lead. He got the second uh, to allow us to equalize. And he was absolutely all over the place, you know, causing so much mayhem and causing so much um, danger to PSG. And I would arguably say that this is Rafinha's best performance in a Barcelona shirt. And, you know, th this has, you know, Rafinha has done more in a year than what Dembele has done in five. And, you know, that just shows levels right there. Uh, and we did talk about, you know, Dembele in in what, in the uh, match reaction. Uh, absolute snake of a player. Just just unbelievable. But, um, guys, I'm going to be mentioning some of Rafinha's uh, goals contribution this season. Uh, a goal plus assist versus Mallorca in a 2-2 draw. Assisted the winner versus Atletico Madrid. Assist versus Girona. Assisted the opener versus Valencia. Goal plus assist versus Almeria in a 3-2 win. Goal plus assist versus Etafe. Assisted the opener versus Napoli. Assist versus Atletico Madrid. Scored the winner versus Las Palmas. Two goals versus PSG. 17 goal contributions, eight goals and nine assists, and just a total of 20 starts. Now, I know, guys, we clown um, Rafinha and we say he's a bum. We say, you know, he, he's, he's a fake Brazilian. He has, like, a passport from Bangladesh. But Rafinha was so, so vital in yesterday's uh, match. And, you know, what happens if we found a new role for Rafinha? What happens if Barcelona search for a left winger? We've had it all along, and it's Rafinha. Now, Rafinha in you know, last season... Xavi, he basically implemented him to be a touch line winger. And, you know, Rafinha, he just wasn't working in that position. <clears throat> 
But Rafinha, as a left winger with the freedom to basically roam inside, that was completely different. And he was able to mark a difference in the team. And Rafinha was absolutely fantastic on the night. The best performance that he played in the Barcelona jersey. And he showed up with some vital and key goals. But guys, you know, uh, lastly, I want to be talking about Robert Lewandowski because Robert Lewandowski, as, as I said, his distribution and his link-up play was absolutely fantastic. And, you know, talking about, about you know, the work rate that this in this um, this absolute robot uh, gave. Robert Lewandowski was a Barcelona player who covered the, the longest distance, the most distance against PSG with a 10 Point six six kilometers ran and uh, that just basically shows the intensity and the work rate of the polish striker and you know Lewandowski he didn't have a brilliant start to the season he he just wasn't there he, he wasn't at the uh, at, at the races uh but you know 2024 has been Lewandowski's year he's been on fire at the start and you know he's basically shown an improvement in that level could that be you know a change of training could that be Vitor Roque coming in and adding some pressure saying hey if Lewandowski if you're not on it Vitor Roque is going to be taking uh, your spot but overall just our attack has been absolutely flawless and Lamine Mal, even though it wasn't his best game but he's still seven, say 17 years of age putting in a veteran performance a professional performance absolutely brilliant from Barcelona uh, but guys I talked very briefly, um, well, very briefly, a 17-minute video uh, about uh, you know our, my reaction and you know, about that that PSG match. Absolutely, I I'm 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 feel so elated. I feel so excited. I feel so proud of the of the team uh, for that performance that they put in yesterday. And you know, even even if you know Barcelona they don't manage to win the Champions League this season, Barcelona have showed tremendous growth, and I'm so so excited for next season, especially taking into account uh, these type of uh, these these young. Uh, players in our squad and the young core that we are developing. Uh, but guys, let me know your guys' thoughts on Barcelona's historic performance against PSG, beating PSG in the Parc de France in their own home. Um, definitely let me know your guys' thoughts on that. And uh, of course, we're gonna on tonight, we're going to be making a UCL reaction where we'll be talking about more of the other games as well. But um, guys, thank you guys all for watching. Thank you guys for tuning into the channel. And uh, I'll catch you guys all in the next.